Good morning. My name is Brian Lodato, and before I start our presentation, I just want to get a show of hands. How many of you guys are uh, big hockey fans in here? All right, a lot. Um, you guys think that there should be fighting in the league or not? Yeah. What about you? No, I, I like hockey. I'm not, really not big on the fights. All right. Well, I agree with most of the people in the class, and I think that there should be fighting. Um, it's always been a part of the game, and I think it should continue to be. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the modern NHL and the big fighters and the role that they have on hockey teams. And I'm going to compare their salaries to some of the top goal scorers in the league. The modern NHL. Um, today, the NHL is all about speed and finesse. There's a lot of technology that they didn't have before with skates and sticks. They can shoot the puck a lot faster, and they can skate a lot faster. Um, it's not as simple of a game as it used to be. And there's a lot of new rules. After the uh, lockout, the NHL and the players couldn't agree on a salary. Um, a salary cap um, in the 2004, before the 2004-2005 season, and so there wasn't a season. And after they came back for 05, 06, there was a lot of new rules. Um, overtime, you would play a five-minute overtime period, and if the game wasn't decided by then, you'd go into a shootout. And there, they got rid of two-line passing and a couple other rules. And the modern NHL still has a reputation for fights. I mean, back in the day, there used to be, that was like the only reason you went out to a hockey game, pretty much, see the fights. Um, the top goal scorers are quick and agile, and they typically get paid the most money, and they draw spectators to the game and boost revenue. Here are some of the top goal scorers in the league right now. That's Sidney Crosby for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Vincent LeCavalier for the Tampa Bay Lightning, and Alexander Ovechkin plays for the Capitals some of the best players in the league right now. The enforcers. The enforcers on the team are the best fighters. They don't score often, and they're usually forwards on the team. They act as bodyguards for uh, maybe the smaller players on the team, protect goal scorers. They get in a lot of fights, get hurt a lot, as you can see, that guy right there. And they're typically paid the least. They get paid a lot less than the goal scorers. And winning a fight gives your team momentum, so they play an important role. Pass enforcers. This is Bob Probert. He played for the Detroit Red, Win Red Wings. He was drafted in 1983, and he uh, regained prominence in the league after losing after the Red Wings lost 14 seasons. And his job was basically to protect Steve Eiserman, who was uh, their top goal scorer. Dave the Hammer Schultz. I'm sure many guys know him. He's played for the Flyers, and his job was to protect Bobby Clark in the mid 1970s. And he helped uh, bring the Flyers to two Stanley Cups. Dave Semenko, this guy uh, was nicknamed the policeman. He's on the left there, as you can tell, you don't really want to mess with him. He looks like a scary guy. Um, he kept Wayne Gretzky safe on the Oilers from uh, in the mid-1980s and helped them win their first two championships. Forbes did an article that compared player fighting stats since the start of the 2006-2000 season to their pay last year. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the modern fighters in the league. Colton Orr. He plays for the New York Rangers, and he's a right wing. He's six foot three, two twenty-three pounds, and he has a fight record of twenty-one, eleven, and two. And he only gets paid five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. That is fifty thousand more than the minimum um, salary in the NHL, which is four hundred seventy-five thousand. He leads the NHL in fights, and he's rated the best fighter for the money. When you compare him to somebody like Vincent LeCavalier, he Vincent LeCavalier gets paid about eight million dollars a year, and he gets. 500,000, so it's a huge difference. George Larocque, he's probably the best fighter in the league right now. He's only lost one out of his last 30 fights. His fight record is 19, 0 and 2. Um, he's 6 foot 3, 253 pounds, and he's rated the second best fighter for the money, just because he has such a high salary. Donald Brashear, I'm sure many of you guys know who he is. He used to play for the Flyers. He's also a big fighter. His record is 17, 6 and 3. He's had 210 career fights since he's been in the NHL, which has been 15 years, and that's the most out of any active player in the NHL, and he's ranked the fourth best fighter. And there's a picture of uh, Don Brashear about to lay down a fist on somebody when he played for the Flyers. As I said before, um, there was a lockout which canceled the 2004-2005 season, and there's a lot of new rules. Um, 
when they eventually agreed on a salary cap, it was 57% of revenue, and before that it was around, I think, 75%. And another um, thing that they decided on was to take a stance to reduce fighting. There were 789 fights in the season before the lockout, and then after the lockout there was only 466. However, in 2007-2008, there was a 33% increase in fights to 664, and there's over 850 fights expected this year. What's happening is the NHL is recognizing the fighting, the fighting trend and the place it has in the game. Like I said before, it's, it's always been a major part of ice hockey, and they realize that there's just no getting around it. And uh, the NHL has actually began adding video clips of fights to their website for the first time ever. Got a lot of complaints about that. The conclusion. <clears throat> fighting will always be a part of hockey. The fans love it. I mean, I know here in Philadelphia that the fans go more crazy when there's a fight than when the Flyers score a goal. Um, the enforcers act as a backbone to any strong hockey club, and inexpensive enforcers enable teams to spend more money on skilled players. Finding a bargain tough guy helps teams win and ultimately makes some money. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when the commissioner of the NHL sees, I'm trying to know who that is, but when he sees like the uh, commissioner of the NFL giving out fines for like hits on quarterbacks, do you think that somewhere along the line he's going to like make a penalty more than five minutes in the box for an NHL fight? Because every other sport, if you fight in, you, you're getting suspended for numerous games, especially the NBA now after that one incident. Do you yeah. think it'll ever come down to where they suspend you for a couple games or something? I'm pretty sure they were talking about it, and I think it was, I don't remember what it was, but I know that during the lockout they were talking about doing that, like if you got in a fight there, you got suspended for a certain amount of games, but uh, the only way you would get suspended is if you took like a cheap shot at somebody, then you get suspended, but I mean, the way it's going now, I don't think that's ever going to happen, because they're getting more lenient, so. Um, that was just the past two seasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot so to mention that. No, that's okay. Yeah, that was your record the past two seasons.